God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. We are Abundant Grace Church. I'm Bishop Ramon de Maria. I'm the pastor. And truly, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will all rejoice and be glad in it. We're going to pick up on our series titled, The Last Heartbeat, from James chapter 4 and verse 14. And this will be part 4. Our verse reads, Why, you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. That's the New International Version. Good news, Bible renders it. You don't even know what your life tomorrow will be. You are like a puff of smoke which appears for a moment and then disappears. And that is so true, my beloved. Our life is so short compared to eternity. In that short period of time, you can determine as to where you will spend eternity. Now, our verse today will be from Hebrews chapter 9, and verse 27, and this is the heart of the message. And it reads as follows from the King James Version, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Now the Bible basic English renders it, And because by God's law death comes to men once, and after that they are judged. Now the Good News Bible renders it, Everyone must die once, and after that be judged by God. My beloved, everyone is going to be judged. You can accept Christ in this life and be judged innocent, or reject Christ in this life and be judged as guilty. I'm mentioning these three translations today because they stress the importance of God's judgment because of sin. After this, the judgment deals with of the great day. At the moment of death, every man's final state is determined. You don't get another opportunity as to make a choice to where you will spend eternity. But there is not a word in scripture of a particular judgment immediately after death. It is, there is the great white throne judgment. After the minute you die, you go into a place that is known as torment. It is a holding place. And that's if you are lost. If you are a Christian, you go to paradise, which is a holding place. And you can see that in Jesus' story of the rich man and Lazarus. The fixed order for all men is to die only once and to be judged after death. When they die, finality is stamped on their life work. You can't come back and change it. can't say, let me come back and tell my brothers and tell my family like the rich man wanted to. You cannot come back. The way you die, you are judged. What you did while you were living is gone. You can't correct it. That's why it's good to make peace before you die. Dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. My beloved, you came from the dust of the earth, and you shall return to the dust of the earth. My beloved, I can't stress enough that you only die one time. Death is final. You cannot come back to see your loved ones. They can't call unto you through some seance or some gypsy or anything else. You cannot make contact with the world of the dead. You die once, then the judgment follows. Revelation, well, let me say this. In Revelation chapter 11, verses 1 through 14, we read about the two witnesses, who we believe is Enoch and Elijah. They were carried off, but they must come back and die. And they will die on the streets. And then after three days, they will disappear. But know that we must all die one time. Romans chapter 5 verse 17 says, For if because of one man's trespass, death reigned through that one man, much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in life through that one man, Jesus Christ. Victory can only come through Jesus Christ. You can have all the riches in this world. It will not buy you salvation. They will not buy you salvation. They will not buy you a place in heaven. Many rich people have gone before us. I can't say where they are right now. But the one thing I know, it didn't save them from dying. They died, and that is final. And according to the decision that they made in life as to whether to accept Christ or deny Christ, determine where they are going to spend eternity. Either in the presence of God and Christ, or in the presence of Satan and his demons, out of the sight of Christ. It's a decision that all mankind has to make. My beloved, life only comes through one person. That's Jesus Christ, who is the Messiah. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 27 says, For the 
the Son of Man is about to come in the glory of his Father with his angels. And then he will reward each one according to his deeds. You will be judged. And Jesus is going to come back a second time. And let me say this. We believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. When it takes place, it is a judgment. Because if you are in Christ, you go. You're raptured. If not, you stay here. But being as you are still living here, you will have an opportunity to receive Christ because you are still living. But if you die and don't accept Christ, then you are judged as guilty. My beloved, you must make a decision as to where you will spend eternity. Jesus says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. The return of Christ in relationship to the rapture or the catching away of the two Christians is a form of judgment. I just said that. It's a form of judgment. Because, once again, this is so important. Because the rapture can come at any time. Prophecies have been fulfilled. When is it coming? I have no idea. But I am ready. And every Christian is ready. If you are not a Christian, you are not ready. And it's going to take place. It is a judgment. Those that are saved are changed in the twinkling of an eye. At that sound of the trump. And the dead in Christ shall rise. They shall rise first. And those of us or those that are, have gone, you know what's going to happen to them. Those that have gone to the grave already and not saved, what well, they're already in torment. But those that have died in Christ, they're going to go up from the grave. Whether they're dust, bones, they've been cremated, their ashes scattered, they drowned and they're eaten up by sharks in the sea or whatever. Through Christ, all things are possible. They're all going to come together and raise up. And we which are alive are going to meet them in the air. And there we shall be with the Lord forever. What a beautiful sight that's going to take place. It's beautiful for the saints of God, but for those that are left behind, it's total turmoil. If a Christian is flying a plane and there's no other pilot, if the co-pilot is saved, there's nobody to fly the plane, it goes down. Buses will crash if the bus drivers are Christian. Cars will crash. Boats will run up on shore. Boats will crash too. Trains will crash. There's going to be total chaos. And guess what? As usual, the lost are going to blame the Christian for doing it. But there won't be any true Christians around to blame. They are gone. The fake Christians, those that just went to church, they joined the church because their grandmother went there or their father went there, whatever, they're going to remain behind to suffer the wrath of God. They may be saved during that time, or they may choose not to be saved. But you don't have to be in that position. You can go if the rapture takes place. If you die before that, you can seal your destiny if you are in Christ. The thing is, where do you want to spend eternity? My beloved, after that, the next judgment to take place on the earth is the second coming of Christ. And that is going to come at the battle of Armageddon. And then after this, or after that, let me put it that way, the great white throne judgment. Everybody at that judgment is going into the lake of fire. There is no hope for anybody that is out of Christ, which means anyone that has not become a Christian during their lifetime, okay? There is no hope for them. But you can have hope while you are still living. How many of you could tell me when you're going to die? You know, I've been in the presence of people that are going to die. They've been on hospice. And they might say, uh, the hospice worker might say, or the hospice nurse, whatever, he's going to die in five minutes. He could last a week or she could last a week. Nobody knows. No one can be God. No one can play God. People try to play God, but they're never successful. They may come within range, but they can't tell you the exact moment that that person is going to take their last breath. I can't tell you when you're going to take your last breath. You can't tell me when anyone's going to take their last breath. But God knows when everyone is going to take their last breath. You have no idea when you want to take your last breath. When that last heartbeat will beat. You have no idea. I don't know. You don't know. Only God knows. And if you are not ready, you're going to go anyway. If you are ready, you go to be with Christ. If you're not ready, you go into torment, period. You either go with Christ in paradise or you go with Satan in torment. Where do you want to spend eternity? Beloved, eternity doesn't end. It has no ending. So determine this day where you will spend eternity, either in heaven or in the lake of fire. It's up to you. I can't present it any better than that. My beloved, where are you going after your last heartbeat? The question and answer has eternal consequences or eternal blessings. The decision you make concerning Jesus Christ will determine where you will abide eternally, which means 
forever. In the presence of God or out of the presence of God. Remember, your existence in this earth is only as a vapor or smoke ring. But eternity is never ending. Never. So please think about it and make the right choice. And the right choice is to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. That is the whole message here. You are afforded the opportunity to make the choice as to where you will spend eternity. The last heartbeat. In a heartbeat, you could be gone. So if you have never made a commitment to Jesus Christ, if you have never repented of your sins, please do so today. You must repent of your sins. You must believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior of all mankind. That was crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day, ascended into heaven, is now sitting at the right hand of God the Father. You must believe that He is the only way to the Father. You must be sorry for your sins and accept God's plan of salvation through His Son, Jesus Christ. If you would like to do that today, I me to lead you in a prayer. You must mean it from your heart. God knows if you mean it. He knows your heart. He knows everything. You can't fool Him. You may fool me or someone else, but you can't fool Him. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I heard the message today in a heartbeat or the last heartbeat. At the last heartbeat, what will happen? Father God, I know that right now, if I died, I would go to hell. Or I'm not sure where I would go. But today, I want to make sure of where I would spend eternity. I'm sorry for my sins. I ask that you reap that. You saved me because I believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior of all mankind. That is crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day, ascended into heaven, is God sitting at your right hand in a place of power and majesty. I believe that today. I don't understand everything, but I believe that for sure today. I believe it by faith. And I ask you to forgive me and to save me today. And I believe that through my sincerity and my repentance, that I have been forgiven. Lead me and guide me in the way that you will have for me to go. And I thank you for that today. And thank you for saving. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you. Amen. My beloved, if you said that prayer, meant it from your heart. Let me be the first to welcome you into the kingdom of God. Now what I want you to do is go to a Bible preaching, teaching church. Get an audience with a pastor or one of his elders. Tell him what happened. Ask him to anoint you with oil, to pray with you, to pray for you. He might ask you to recite the prayer of repentance again. That's fine. Then ask him to baptize you by full immersion in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then what I would like you to do is contact me at Abundant.Grace at att.net. That is abundant.grace at att.net or through our website at www.abundantgracechurch.net or through our other website at abundantgraceofmidlothian.com. Please let me hear from you. You can continue to watch our videos on YouTube. You can listen to our audio portion on Spreaker.com under my name, Bishop Full Gospel New Life. We're on different outlets. We're on local radio here. So please, there is a way for you to listen. Thank you for being with us today. This concludes our message. Part 4 of the message title, In a Heartbeat or The Last Heartbeat. From James chapter 4 and verse 14. And today we covered Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27. God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. Please contact me at abundant.grace at att.net. We are Abundant Grace Church. I'm Bishop Ramon de Maria. I'm the pastor of Abundant Grace Church. And thank you for watching this video today. God bless you and go with God.